Hey, good morning, grantees. Thank you for coming. My name is Sherry Crose. I'm executive director of the Honorable Order, and we're going to stretch out about a minute before we start to get everyone who's running back to their desk with their cup of coffee, because I'm sure several of you are doing that right now. I hope everyone's having a good day here in headquarters. It's pouring down rain in Louisville, Kentucky, but we need that rain. Except our front yard looks like a leaf mess. So I'm glad you all are not, not at headquarters today. And while I'm killing time just a little bit, let me introduce Eric Patterson. I think all of you know him, uh, Eric. Good morning, hope everyone's doing good this morning. And uh, thank you all for joining us for the webinar. Well, I see people are back to their desk. I'm just kidding. I know I can't see you. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. And because today we're happy to host the webinar for the 25 grant cycle and application process. So today we're going to walk through changes for the 25 grant cycle, review this year's timeline, and briefly cover our grant guidelines. We're also going to address common application pitfalls and close by answering your questions. Remember, your questions are key, so drop them in the Q&A tab on the right at any time during today's webinar, and don't forget to check out the handouts tab for detailed resources that complement today's presentation, including our 25 Good Works program guidelines and tips for navigating the online grant system. Following this webinar, you'll receive an email with links to those handouts, a copy of the slides for the presentation, and recording of today's webinar. Before I want to begin, I do want to tell you about the funding that we provide to nonprofits because it all comes from the generosity of Kentucky colonels who reside in every state of the union and in 76 countries. They believe in your mission and they know that their annual, annual contributions make stay Kentucky to help Kentuckians. So at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Eric uh, to show you how to apply. And real quick before I go forward, um, is everyone able to hear us? Okay, I got one comment that it was a little bit hard to hear us. If you all could just give me a thumbs up if uh, we're coming through clear. Um, but I'll go ahead and uh, start. Uh, so next Monday, uh, November 18th, uh, you can begin emailing me your uh, letter of intents. Uh, once received, I will review the letters within 48 hours. Um, and if approved, you will receive an access code for the application. Your, le your letter must be on your letterhead and include your EIN number, a brief description of your organization, and a brief description of your request. Uh, the LOI must be completed and approved before your application process can begin. And when Eric says brief, please only do two or three sentences, description of your organization, and of the request. Starting December 2nd, applications will be available for submission. If this is your first time applying for a grant, you will need to create an account. Um, and we have included a video tutorial um, in our grant system tips handout. Once the applications are available, you can access them through the applicant dashboard after you log in. Um, and then you can enter uh, the access code I email you and select the correct application. Um, a common question we get is if there's a deadline for your letter of intent. Um, and there isn't one, uh, but we do recommend sending it in as soon as possible to give you ample time to complete your application. Uh, now I want to kind of move on to the timeline here. Um, as mentioned earlier, the applications will be available beginning December 2nd, um, and there are the different deadlines based on the total of your request. For grant requests of $10,000 or greater, the deadline is Friday, January 10th, 2025, for requests between $2,500 and $9,999, uh, the deadline is Friday, January 24th. And for grant requests under $2,499, the deadline is Friday, February 7th, 2025. Um, and on all those deadlines, uh, the deadline, uh, the time to have them submitted by is 5 p.m. Eastern time. Um, also, if your organization is applying for uh, a new organization application for organizations one to five years in existence. Uh, the deadline is the same as the small applications on Friday, February 7th, 
Um, and as a reminder, those requests are capped at 5,000. And I'd like to say we do chuckle because we see grant uh, applications that are $9,999. So we're fairly aware that you don't want to do the big grant request for $10,000. So I just want to mention thanks for the chuckle when that, those come through. Uh, yeah, we, we try to space out these application uh, deadlines to make sure that everyone's application uh, gets the attention that it deserves during our internal review. Um, and as always, our advice is to submit well before the deadline and start gathering those crucial details for your request now. So let me talk about eligible organization. There's a slide popping up. So please take a moment to review those eligibility. If you have any questions, drop them in the Q&A. So the next slide will be ineligible organization. Here are the types of organizations that we do not fund. If you're unsure about your organization, now's the time to ask. You can type your question or get in touch with Eric after today's webinar. So let's talk about what we fund. Our grant process is limited to funding for tangible products that directly benefit your clients. It's not for overhead costs, it's not for salaries. So please reach out to us if you're uncertain about your project's eligibility. For a comprehensive list of what we don't fund, review our guidelines. And we truly do not want you to have to fill out the application only for us to call you and say it is, it, we don't fund that project. So let's talk about reporting and reimbursement. If your application gets approved, you will have until October 31st, 25, to provide the necessary documentation for grant expenditures. That means invoices and receipts. Remember our process is a reimbursement process, meaning we won't send reimbursement until we receive that documentation for your grant. All items should be purchased between mid-June award letter and October 31st, 25. Anything bought before the award date will not be reimbursed. And this does happen annually, so please make sure of that. If you need an extension due to unforeseen circumstances, let us know before Tuesday, September 30th, 2025. Please note there are very few extensions that we grant. Now I wanna to briefly touch on how we review your grants. First, Eric and I read every one of them and provide notes. Then we invite colonels from several states surrounding Kentucky to come in and review those grant applications as well. We want them to see where their dollars potentially could go. From those two review sessions, Eric and I develop a list of grantees that might not move forward. Might not is the key. Because then the grants committee approves every grant that's moving forward, the list of those that might not and the grantees and uh, I'm sorry, and the trustees can put those grantees back into the pot. And when I say the pot, then what happens is those grants are disseminated to each of our trustees. Each trustee has about 20 to 25 grants that they review. They then will reach out to the nonprofit either through phone calls or visits, and then they determine what items we will fund of your grant application. So now let's talk about recognizing the colonels, because as I noted, colonels from every state and 76 countries provide funding for these grants. So we want grant, re we want grant recipients to acknowledge the Kentucky colonels. So we'll provide you plaques, decals, signs, and vanity plates to make it easy for you. If we do not provide you recognition items to be displayed, please reach out to Eric. We also want reciprocal love on social media or newsletters. We will reach out to your organization for pictures or quotes to use in our social media and our newsletters. So we have set up a follow-up form in the grant system for you to share this information after your grant's complete. Now let's talk about common issues. Eric? Uh, one of the most common issues that we see with uh, grant requests is uh, the grant item request form and the accompanying bids for your request. Um, the number of bids you need for your request depends on the total amount that you are requesting. If you're requesting a grant under $2,499, you only need one bid per item, and you do not need to upload those bids into the system. 
Uh, just keep in mind that our trustees may ask to review those. For requests between $2,500 and $9,999, we're asking for two bids for every item, and you will need to upload those bid documentation into the system. Uh, now, if your request is $10,000 or greater, we do look for three bids for each item, and all of those bids uh, must be uploaded. Uh, make sure that your bids include the vendor information, a visual or description of the item, and of course the price. Uh, we do not accept verbal bids or links to items as copies. Uh, and for a guide, we have included an example grant item request form and sample bids in the system to guide you through. Uh, I did want to discuss one uh, new change that we made this year regarding the bids to try to make it a little bit easier on uh, those who are requesting a lot of items. If your request includes bids for items that cost $20 or less, such as uh, some food items, art supplies, other thing, anything small like that, you only need to provide one bid per item, regardless of which application you are completing, and then just provide the names of the other vendors that you researched. Um, and then before you hit submit on your grant item request form and start uploading those bids, uh, we do recommend uh, doing some homework and make sure that you're asking for exactly what you need. Uh, think about how these items will serve your organization uh, seven months down the road. Another common issue that we see with uh, applications that we have to reach out to you, you all about is uh, regards to the financial uh, statements. Uh, when it comes to the financial reports, we request your organization's 990s and organization financial statements. Uh, for your 990s, uh, what we're looking for is your two most recent complete filings. Um, we've seen in the past um, organizations sometimes only upload the first few pages or partial 990s. But what we uh, really need to see is the whole file, including all the schedules and attachments. As for your organization's financial statements, we will accept either uh, your organization's audit, um, if available, uh, or profit and loss statements and balance sheets. Um, if you're ever stuck with uh, file sizes or have any questions about what, what to provide, please reach out to us. Um, and remember, submitting incomplete or incorrect financials could negatively impact your request. We want to give you lots of time. So let me reinforce submitting your grant application early because if you do an incomplete financial or there's questions you didn't answer, we want Eric to have the time to bounce back to you to correct your error and re correct your error and resubmit the grant. Because we understand many of you are small nonprofits and uh, you've got volunteers or one staff so we want to make it as easy as possible. So at this time, we want to address Q&As because as we all know, those are traditionally the best questions that come out of webinars. So Eric and I will start scrolling through them to give us just a couple of seconds, sip your coffee while we read them and address them. So looks like the first question we have is if, uh, can we ask for items that would be used in 2025 and 2026 or just used in 2025? That would be items used in 20, like late 2025. It could be into early 2026. Um, let's see. Let's we have a question, wait, uh, to qualify, if it is hand, if it is a handout to our client needs, can we stock up on the items? Uh, yes, you can. A reasonable stock up. I don't think we would purchase things for five years out. Are you, here we have a question from Jennifer. Are you able to apply if you don't have a 990? Well, that I think rolls back to your organization. We understand that churches don't have 990s. So yes, they can apply. Um, so if you have a question, call us today right afterwards. So next question, Eric. Do both, this is from David. Do both all, do both all bids need to be the exact same make and model? They do not. Um, that often happens with an organization who wants vehicles uh, that they have two different choice or even want some sort of SUV or some sort of four, uh, four door car. They don't have to be the same. 
Eric, you want to get the next one? Yeah, we had a question about how far back are financial statements that we need. Um, and we just need the, kind of like the 990s. We just look for the, the two most recent complete years. So let's see. Um, and another question was when the letter of intent is due. Um, and there is no due date. Um, I would just recommend doing it as soon as possible to give you time to complete the applications. The different applications have the deadlines, but there's no uh, letter of intent due date. And I will say we do see letter of intents come 24 hours out from the deadline. So don't do that to yourself. Christy is saying that uh, she's applied for a grant, was, was denied because her organization was financially healthy. Do you recommend not submitting an application if your annual budget is over $1 million? No, that's, uh, Christy, we don't recommend that. Um, and actually, I would circle back to Eric on Monday or Tuesday of next week because we're going to have that discussion at the Grants Committee meeting coming this Friday on what uh, the trustees feel is an organization that is too healthy. Um, and then we have another question. If, does the committee have funding preferences such as underserved, educational, health care? Uh, Amy, the trustees don't. Um, we have funded everything from uh, spade and neutering for animals in rural areas to underserved communities. I would uh, food for underserved communities or housing for homeless. What I would suggest is when you do your description, if you target education or underserved, I would definitely do it in a description. Uh, the next question is um, we got is if, uh, if you grant money to local agencies, are you eligible to apply? Uh, let me address this and I'm sorry, you, we don't support United Ways, even though we do recognize you have uh, unique programs. Unfortunately, we don't support United Ways. Another question we asked is if churches can apply. Um, and we have had churches apply in the past. Uh, one thing that we look for is if, if they offer programs that are um, available to anyone, regardless of religious affiliation, um, such as we've had churches apply for their food pantry or uh, clothing pantry um, and for items for that. And that would be eligible um, if it's open to the community at large. Eric's killing me because he's cutting off your names when he scrolls up these questions. Stop it, Eric. <laughs> uh, Lauren asks, what kind of bid would you need for food for a food pantry? Uh, that's a great example of the new changes this year. If you do an example of green beans for your food pantry, just go to one of your preferred vendors and get quotes. And then let's say you also go to Amazon and get quotes. Um, we just need the one. We just need bids for the one. We don't need Target, Amazon, and Kroger's. Does that explain that, Eric? Yeah, and I think some people have done in the past where they'll create a card of the 10 or 15 items they need so you can see the price of each item. Um, if you have a recent receipt that shows the price of that item, um, that would also kind of work as the bids. We've got another question from Susan here. Um, can you request items that serve the mission as opposed to direct to individuals? Uh, I think that just, yes, because uh, I'm sure your mission supports individuals. Another question we got from Lacey is if our organization does not serve clients directly, would you be able to submit a request for current needs like equipment um, or software? Um, tell Lacey, tell us who you're, tell us who you represent. Uh, because we have bought equipment for CASA volunteers. Uh, Cause we understand, I mean, they're directly affecting the CASA client, but not the organization, so to speak. So I think you need to call us and we can ferry that out for you.
Uh, we've got a question from Kristen is if there is an example or guide on how the bid to look um, for each application uh, when you're applying uh, under the bid section, there is an example of the grant item request form in a company of bids that you can uh, review. Uh, Russell, thanks for the heads up. Uh, we'll we'll also chat. We'll also check for questions. So you got a question from uh, Debbie. Can an application be submitted for a smaller grant and also a larger grant as well? Good try, Debbie. But no, you got to pick one of the two. And then another question from Brenda is if utility costs for a homeless shelter would be eligible. Um, and unfortunately, uh, utility costs or any other type of overhead costs are, are not eligible uh, for funding. And they got a question from uh, Victor. Um, are you asking organizations to have multiple potential vendors? What if only one organization provides the product? Um, That's a good question, Victor. I'm glad you asked it. Yeah, we certainly understand that there's some products that are only sold by one vendor. Um, if you have any of those, I'd recommend just kind of list that bid. And then there's a section on the grant data request form, as well as a follow up question on application where you can explain why that's the only bid and why that would work for your organization. Question from uh, Kimberly, uh, what about stipends paid directly to workforce readiness program participants? Kimberly, we haven't had this question. Um, I'm, I'm going to say no, we won't do the stipends, but what I will promise you is we'll ask, we'll talk about that at the Grants Committee meeting tomorrow. I promise you that. So call uh, Eric uh, Monday or Tuesday of next week. Um, a question from Janet is if a company already has a company vehicle, uh, would we pay, would we provide a grant to help cover vehicle insurance? Um, and unfortunately, no, that we would not be able to provide a grant for that insurance. Uh, Gail asked, do organizations who have received three years of funding need to sit out this year? Uh, no, Gail, we will notify you before the end of November. We will notify the organizations by the end of November if we're going to ask you to sit out. That list has not been approved yet, uh, but we will notify you before the grant applications open. And then I got a question from uh, Katie here um, asking if you have Kentucky Colonels on the board at R1, do you want to know that? Uh, but we do have a question on the application um, that asks if there are any members of your board that are Kentucky colonels. Uh, so I would uh, make sure to list those um, if you know that they are. And Katie, I would also denote to those board members um, if they're active with HOKC and thank them if they are contributing to us, because again, that money goes back to nonprofits in the Commonwealth. So I would thank you'd want to thank them for that, for their support, supporting your nonprofit as well as this nonprofit that supports your nonprofit. And then I've got another question from Kathy. Would an HVAC upgrade for a municipal event center be considered? Kathy, that's going to determine on uh, where you get your funding. If your funding comes from state or city uh, for the municipal event center, potentially not. Uh, so I think you probably need to call us. Hi, Abby. Abby is my bourbon friend. We have a wonderful board member that uh, thinks very highly of Mission Lexington that has helped both of us. So, hey, Abby, uh, your request has to be specific for one project or can we apply for different items to support the entire organization as a whole? Eric? Yeah, I would say we've, we've had that in the past where um, if they're smaller items, we, they, we've had organizations ask for items for multiple different programs, such as the elicit your pharmacy and medical clinic. Um, 
And so, yeah, I, I do think that would qualify. A question from Yvette uh, asking when the board would determine the definition of too healthy of an organization. Um, and our, our grants committee is discussing that tomorrow. Um, we've got another question from Denise if utility assistance for clients would be eligible eligible and unfortunately not uh, we don't we can't fund any utilities or any other type of kind of those overhead costs now let us uh, move to the chat for questions because we're out of them for the Q&A so let's just briefly run through those give and me a second here I'm trying to figure out where we left off okay Andrea Blair, uh, good going. Andrea works for Kentucky Humane Society, excellent organization. Would veterinary care for shelter, an shelter animals count? Uh, yes, absolutely, they would count. Brenda asked, if you have funding in 24, can you apply in 25? Uh, yes, you certainly can, Brenda. And I would also say if you were asked to sit out in 24, uh, there's a chance that you could apply in 25. Again, let me denote, if we ask you to sit out, you will be notified before the end of November. We got another question here from Melissa. Um, is it possible to use funds to furnish an outreach office for items such as desk, chair, um, printer, computers, et cetera? Melissa, I think the answer to that would be yes, if the outreach office is banned by volunteers. We have another question from Miranda. Can we purchase items that will have use in 2025, but also ongoing, such as dance costumes? Uh, absolutely, Miranda. We purchased for a ballet in Lexington, uh, the Snow Queen outfit this year. Another question from Kelly on average, kind of what the highest amount you can apply for over the 10,000 is. Kelly, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. So our average grants over the last several years have been seven to $10,000. Uh, we have funded a $67,000 project. Uh, we have had nonprofits, I'll be very upfront, who applied for a million dollars. Their grant was not even reviewed. Uh, we are projecting in 2025 to grant out $2.5 million, the same that we did in 2024. That $2.5 million went to 325 nonprofits spread across the state. So I think you have to be very strategic. If you really want to apply for a $60,000 on up grants, uh, then you're really gonna have to plead your case to the trustees. During our grant vote, which happens in the sum early summertime, if a trustee has a grant that's over $25,000, they have to do an individual presentation to the entire board of directors to get it approved. All of the grants that are under $25,000 are approved with a joint resolution. So, so you really have to think about that. Um, obviously, I just noted if you apply for a million dollar grant, uh, we won't even look at the grant application. I got another question from Stephanie. Uh, for vehicle, vehicle request, do you require a matching grant? Um, and yes, most of the time we do, especially with the um, higher cost of vehicles, we will provide up to 20,000. And I know uh, most that will cover most new vehicles. And, and vehicles also can be obviously cars, vans, trucks. They can also be what tractors. They can be front end loaders. So they can be gators. I got a question from Rich, if the Colonel's partially funded project in 24, can the organization apply for the second half of the project in 2025? Um, and I would say yes, you can. Seeing that 
question from Marie um, for a volunteer orchestra in Lexington. Asking about rental or salaries. Think, um, so we funded, just to give you some ideas, some, we've funded instruments in the past, um, different kind of equipment or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, we don't fund any kind of rentals or salaries or anything like that. But think of any type of equipment that you maybe we've, feel. We've done for. music stands. We've done violins. We've done staging. We've done drum kits, pianos, but tradition, but not salaries. Got a question from Teresa here um, for organizations who did not own their building, but they're looking to add benches uh, for clients to sit on. Um, if we move to a new location, would those benches uh, need to move as well? Yes, Teresa, that's exactly what they need to do. And yes, you can apply for benches. Yeah, when we look at organizations who don't own the building, uh, for any project that you apply for, we do want to make sure that any items you request can be moved to a new location. And so let me address if you don't own the building yet you're in, but you have at least a 20 year lease with the owner. And that traditionally happens with cities who will lease for a dollar uh, to nonprofits. You can apply for a grant, but you have to have a 20 year, at least a 20 year lease. Uh, I got another question. Uh, how often are requests partially funded versus fully funded? And um, I'd say it, it varies. You'll see grants that are fully funded, partially funded, or not funded at all. But um, kind of it, that decision is up to each trustee who's reviewing the grant. So it's kind of uh, hard to say how often it happens. It's each trustee kind of looks for different things. Sherry asked, uh, what is needed in the letter of intent? It's your EIN, EIN number, a brief description of your organization, a brief description of your project, and your address. What am I missing here? Um, and then it just needs to be on your organization's letterhead. letterhead. And as Sherry noted earlier, this can be a very brief letter. Um, I wouldn't spend too much time making a multiple page letter. We just need to make sure that your organization and project uh, qualify. Hang on, we're reading questions. Anthony, I think we just addressed the expectations for the LOI. Let roll roll back to I think Brent, uh, Becca, when you when you'll be meeting with the trustees to determine too healthy uh, of an organization, that would be this Friday. But Becca, I'll also denote that we have a board meeting early December. Uh, where this topic might come up as well. So don't assume that Friday's meeting will be the determining factor. Uh, we've got a question from Lindsay about would a free screening service for children be a tangible item? If so, how the bids are done? Um, I, I think that would qualify, but if you could call us and uh, we can kind of talk through that project, but I do think that's something that uh, would be eligible. Carol, I think I addressed a little bit earlier. If we asked you to sit out in 24, you can apply in 25. Kimberly, the question of what is too healthy of an organization, what does that mean? It's, it is a multi-factor uh, determination. We look at the health of the 990s. We look at the financial statements. We look at different ratios that we create. So unfortunately, I can't give you if your endowment is X, you're too healthy. But I will note on this, if you have an investment account or an endowment or a trust and it is unrestricted, and it is upper millions, you might be considered too healthy. 
but I'm also going to be a little ambiguous and say there are some larger nonprofits that we support um, because we know that they are fiscally very good. So I'm sorry I can't give you the exact term on the terms on that. Uh, but again, let me reiterate, reiterate, if the trustees determine you're too healthy, we will notify you and, at, and notify you not to fill out a grant application. I got another question from Mike about how to provide quotes for automobiles. Um, and that can be something as simple as just pulling a, a quote for the vehicle you're looking for off the, the dealer's website. Um, We've had some people go to the dealer directly to provide a quote. Um, you can do that as well, but um, pulling something just off the website that shows the price and type of vehicle you're looking for um, will suffice. I mean, we've seen Carvana quotes. Um, another question from Denise, what hygiene, item, hygiene items to be given to clients be eligible? Um, that would be eligible, um, but any utility assistance would, be, would not be. Kathy's asking about a remodel of an art center. We certainly have helped art centers um, with walls, white, you know, walls, whiteboards, seating, theater seating. So I think it just uh, is going to be determined on what that remodel looks like. And you also, it's going to be determined on who owns that art center. A question from Kristen of what date the LOI submission window opens. Um, and you can start sending me your letter of intent starting next Monday. The application won't open until December 2nd, but if you want to go ahead and send me your letter, I can go ahead and review those. And then we have a question from Linda. If we were asked to sit out last year due to three years of continued funding, would you be eligible to apply this year? Um, and you would be, um, unless you received a letter saying, you're not eligible for several years. Uh, usually it's just one year you have to sit out and you are eligible to apply again this year. We have several nonprofits that we're giving that we gave significant grants to in 24 that we, the trustee denoted they could not come back to us for several years to apply. So that does happen. Um, a question from Nina, if we fund renovations for, for facilities, um, and yes, we do, such as floors, roofs. Uh, we've done that several of those projects in the past. Uh, let's see. A question from Jennifer is after this. If... Oh, Jennifer, we got time for a phone call. You just have to give us a couple minutes so we can run and get coffee. But we as soon as it ends, it gives us about five minutes and we'll be happy to take phone calls. A question from uh, Jeanette. Uh, if you have a project with multiple components, do you need bids for each component or is one overall bid from the contractor would work? Um, and one overall bid from the contractor uh, will work uh, for that. Debbie, go back to our guidelines and you'll see the date for the letter of intent and for the grant. You'll see those dates that, that are set. Andrea, um, no, there is not projects, matches required for projects above a certain amount. She has asked, Colonel seem to like matching grants. Uh, that some of our trustees like matching grants, some of them don't, uh, but there aren't dollar amounts. Now we have a question from Ellen. If it's okay to repeat a prior request or do you recommend changing it up each year? Um, and we have many organizations who have applied for a uh, similar request for multiple years and um, that, that's not a problem. Hold on a second, I'm scrolling to see if we have any additional questions. I've got a question from Cheryl. If the building does not have a fire alarm system, can we apply for an alarm? Yes, if you own the building or have a 20 plus year lease. 
Jim asked a question about healthy organization. Again, we don't have it in writing, what is a healthy organization, but we will tell you if you're too healthy. And I'll give you one example again. If you have a trust or an investment account or stocks, any type of what I'll call savings that is unrestricted, that is multiple million dollars, you will be questioned if you're too healthy of an organization. Got a question from Marie on if we would fund liability insurance. And unfortunately, we uh, we cannot fund liability insurance. And a question from David, if you need new chairs uh, for a program, would that be one application or two years of grant applications? I guess, David, it's going to determine how many chairs you need and what that total is. Uh, one example is we've done theater seats, part theater seats one year and part theater seats the next. It's just going to determine how much money those chairs are. Robert asked if food pantries uh, request funding for certain foods like goods and meat products. Absolutely, we funded both. A question from Jennifer. Um, if you, when you're completing LOI, if it doesn't, project doesn't qualify, are you able to word it differently to see if another project works? Uh, yes. Um, I'll reach out if the project doesn't qualify and let you know that you would need to apply for something different. Teresa, if you could uh, circle back to our grants, our uh, grant guidelines, I'll give you your deadline of intent. Um, I wanted to clarify with Denise about our the utility assistance question, um, and we wouldn't be able to fund any utility assistance for your clients or for the your own organization. Again, we don't do operation costs, but for those we have done for low income clients like Kroger gift cards, we have done Uber cards uh, to move them to and from jobs and that type of thing. Question from Troy is if box trailers used to transport equipment is considered a vehicle um, and it is not. Um, what I would say, Troy, if you're going to apply for a box trailer, denote how you're going to keep that box trailer secure when it's not in use. Trish asked about a letter of the LOI opens Monday. Is there a deadline? There is not a deadline for a letter of intent. But again, we want to be able to thoroughly read all of your grant applications. If you do the letter of intent two weeks before the deadline of your grant, we might not have a lot of time to read your grant application. So get them in as soon as possible. Looks like we got a couple more questions that came in the... There was a utility question. Again, Eric, did you address that? Scroll on back up. Denise, oh, yeah, we um, okay, we just did that. Utility assistance for clients is not is not funded. Uh, Jen asked if funding for construction cost cost is appropriate. No, it is not. Um, but your question is clearing out of an outdoor space to make way for an art installation would be appropriate. And for construction cost, if you're building a building, let's say, you will need equipment to go in that building, uh, such as maybe tables and chairs for your clients to use. You could apply for those things, but not the construction of the building. Nancy, uh, perhaps, and so Nancy asked regarding what is too healthy of an organization following tomorrow's meeting. I can't guarantee that we can do that, Nancy. Uh, it just depends how that meeting comes out. I'm sorry.
Uh, Amy asked about the letter. If we ask your organization not to apply, if it would be delivered mail or email, um, and it'll just be a quick email um, from me. Um, it, we don't want you to waste your time doing an application just to be turned down. Russell, we're reading your question, but hang on. Um, Russell, that's a, that's a good question. No, it's not given priority, uh, but when you have on the application description of why you want that project, um, certainly denote that it was partially funded last year. It looks like we got uh, one additional question. Um, looking to refinish a boat ramp, uh, would we fund cider building improvements currently? Um, yes, as long as you um, own that site, um, I do think that would be something that would qualify. We've done parking lots and different concrete projects in the past, so I do think that would qualify if you all own the space or have a long-term agreement. Emily is asking a question about a regional rape crisis center and establishing a survivor legal fund. Uh, that is not part of our grant process. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like that's all the questions we have, but if we do have one hand raised, let's address that. John, I'm not sure if you still have a question for us. Uh, if you do, give us a couple, give us a couple minutes again, get coffee, and then Eric will be at his desk. Well, at this point, um, unless there's any other questions, we're going to let you guys go. Um, thank you for attending. Again, have any questions, please call us because we don't want to waste your time uh, filling out applications. And uh, we hope that you have a great day. And again, if we didn't address a question, please feel free to call us. Uh, our number is, Eric, your direct line is? It's 502-753-0780. Uh, and his email, as you already see, is epatterson at kykernels.org. Thank you all. Have a great afternoon.